Annie Banani's newest trick is rolling. When did everyone stop sitting in the back seat? I'm gonna try this for the hair loss situation. <laughs> We're approaching Max Orbit. Thruster set Max. I was blindsided by what came out of her mouth next. Are you all fresh? Fresh mom. <laughs> You're all fresh and so clean. Look at her jammies, you guys. Look at the little mushrooms. You see the little mouse with the dress? Oh, and then the overalls. Cute. Dad picked it out. It's so cute. I thought yeah. she was way. Like, I thought they were way too big for her, but she's now officially fitting in her hair jammies. Get a girl. There you go. All right, I'm showering. Okay. Oh, one pickups already, girl. And good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome back to the channel. I hope y'all are doing super, super duper well. I used to be able to like talk, scroll through TikTok, Instagram, whatever during feeding. And now she's so much more aware of like her surroundings and like she likes to listen to things. She gets really distracted if I'm talking or Jack's talking during feeding. So we'll just see how long I can talk to you guys. But it is Saturday today for us. So happy Saturday. This morning, I went and I got my nails done for the first time since birth. The last time I was there, we were getting my birth nails. And Jack came with me. Sometimes he likes to come because they just do such a good job at like cleaning up your cuticles, your feet, etc. And it feels really good. Plus it was kind of like one of our last activities that we were soaking in together before adding a new member to our fam. But it reminded me that I never told you guys this unhinged story about somebody at the nail salon that time that we went together. Like the things that she... I totally just like, it like left my brain. I feel like a lot of people have stories of things that people say to them when they're pregnant and out in public. And luckily I just didn't encounter a ton of that during my pregnancy until the very end, like days before birth. So I'm gonna have to jog Jack's memory on that about exactly like what she said. And I'll tell you guys in this vlog. But right now we are feeding this little milk monster. And lately I've been enjoying pushing myself to do things that are really uncomfortable for me as a new mom. And before I was a mom, if I had heard me say these things out loud, I'm like, Mac, that's not even a big deal. Like, why is that even hard for you to do? Some of these things sound so easy or minuscule until you become a mom. And I know that different moms have different things that are nerve wracking for them. For me, it's taking her to different places, like different situations. So at first going for a walk with her outside was a huge deal. So like getting over that hurdle, it felt so good. And although these things make me anxious at the time, hi. the feeling that I get after of like confidence and the fact that I pushed myself and I did something that I was scared to do, but I pushed through and did it anyway, is just so worth it. And I want to be able to bring her so many places. I want to show you everything. I just have to work up to it. Mommy just has to work up to it. <laughs> Hi, honey. <gasps> Postpartum hair loss has me like so anal about hair getting caught in her hands because it does like literally I touch my hair and strands fall out. So I'm really afraid of her getting like little tourniquets on her little fingers. But we've been on several walks outside. We've been down like neighborhoods to a coffee shop. That was a big deal. We haven't been to a coffee shop and like taken her out of her stroller to like hang out with us. That is like a new situation to try. And you guys know we went to Allagash and we went during kind of one of her naps. So she kind of just stayed in her stroller and she took a little nappy during that stay versus coming out of the stroller, you know, and like hanging with us. But today I had wanted to go to Allagash during not her nap. So during like a wake window and have her like at a table with us, like take her out of the carriage and like hang with us now that she's so much more alert and she's super interested in her surroundings. But yesterday was Friday and Jack and I picked up our favorite craft beers to enjoy. We got pizza and when she went down for the night, we rented a new rom-com. What was it called? It's like Anyone But You or something. It's with Sydney Sweeney. And that was so fun. That was so fun. Later, you'll be able to watch movies with us. It'll be so fun. We'll watch Disney movies? Maybe we won't watch that one. Maybe we won't watch the anyone but you quite yet until you're older. But because we did that last night, we did the beers and stuff last night, I just wasn't feeling a brewery situation. <laughs> the beer I had last night was like more than enough. So we pulled an audible. We're gonna go to Costco. She's already been to Costco and she does really well and it's really easy to leave if she's not vibing. But it's still really good for me to continue doing things that still make me slightly 
really uncomfortable, you know? Like, even though we've been to Costco and it went well, doing it more times just gets me more and more comfortable. So I made a mini Costco list. I love going to Costco. It's like an adventure, it's an activity, it's so fun. And on the weekends, I don't know if they do this during the weekday either. I guess I've never been during the weekday. They have like all those samples out and stuff. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. A big accomplishment this week though, putting myself outside my comfort zone, going for walks in the stroller, specifically because we live in Maine and specifically because it's so cold and windy outside is really stressful or it used to be more stressful than it is now for me because she doesn't love to be constricted, bundled up, but I got that foot move thing for our stroller and I wanted her to get used to it and we've been on several walks now with Jack like as family walks and she totally vibes during her wake time. It's really great for all of us to just get outside and so she's gotten used to that but I haven't done it by myself and like getting the carriage all situated, out of the trunk, unfolding it, putting her into it, strapping her in etc. Like with extra hands it's just so much more comforting but I was having a pretty bad day this week. This idea just popped in my mind. I'm like I need to push myself and feel proud of myself, confident, like I need to go for a walk outside. I need fresh air and I need to push myself today. And so I did it and it was literally the best and she loved it up until like the last like maybe five minutes and it was totally fine. We were almost home anyway. So yeah, I felt really good about that. I don't know if any other new moms can relate to just like being scared to do things that make us uncomfortable as new moms, but then how good it feels after. So today's adventure is Costco. <laughs> Say, oh my gosh, daddy, you're so silly. Oh my gosh, daddy, you're so silly. <laughs> oh my gosh. My sweet pea. Daddy's so silly. I got this belt bag for Christmas and it's literally life changing. He's not as silly as you are, you silly Billy. And the only cards I ever take in it are my license, <laughs> my payment cards, and my Costco card. It's that would be so sad if you got all the way to Costco and forgot your card. She doesn't love her car seat. She's gotten like a lot, I wouldn't say better. Like I think it's a normal thing for babies to just like not enjoy their car seat. No, love, if your baby doesn't enjoy their car seat. Something must be wrong. But I have seen a lot of people say that when they switch from the infant car seat to the just like next car seat up, they like that a lot better. And part of me is like, should we have gotten an infant car seat? I kind of think just based on what our life style is and everything we didn't do a lot of taking her out of her car seat and putting her in a stroller like we didn't need to do that a lot just based on like how often we went places and things like that at first so it's almost like I'd rather have gotten the all-in-one like car seat with the infant inserts and all of that stuff and we'd have it to grow with her as she becomes a toddler but I think it's just more so looking at like your lifestyle and like how often you go places if you live in a city etc we just thought oh she's an infant we need an infant car seat and that's just not the case Hey, honey. We're gonna get there, and then you're gonna go in a stroller, and then we're gonna stroll around. It's gonna be so fun, I promise. Before she was born, I thought that I would just like sit in the back seat for the first ride home as like a memory type of thing, but I will not be caught dead up in that front seat for I don't even know how long. I just wanna say, I called it. Jack was like, no, you'll stay there for a while. I was like, no, I won't need to. Like, when she's good, she's good. I don't know. When did everyone stop sitting in the back seat? Was it like first week? Was it after a year? So I can't imagine stopping sitting in the back seat. I also can't imagine her sleeping in her own room, so <laughs> they must go hand in hand. So I'm going to lose Mac in a month. She'll just go sleep with Annie. I'm literally gonna, she, she can sleep in her own room, but I will be coming with her. The other thing I wanted to mention while I was back here, we used the portable sound machine for the first time when we were going up to my parents' house the other week because we timed it with a nap time and it worked like a charm twice. We did it on the way there and on the way back and it's over an hour drive and she slept for the majority of the time. So she really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. It was a silent car ride because we had the sound machine on and nothing else, but it was very meditative. And we are off for mobile. Jack always has a burp cloth in his back pocket. If we ever need a burp cloth, it's in Jack's back pocket. Oh. In your back, back, back. Oh up. my gosh. How you doing, baby? Daddy wraps the stroller toy onto her stroller. First up, we need a snack, like a big snack to like grab throughout the week. And then we also need toothpaste. That's crazy. Do you want to grab that yeah. toothpaste? 11.49. Oh my gosh. For, We're set for life. literally so many of these. What are these? Like, Three to four dollars each at the grocery store. Yeah. And we just got it for eleven forty nine. Look at these soaps, that's so cute. Four for eighteen dollars. Those are nice too. Myers. Mm -hmm. A cow 
couch. New couch. Bub, look at this variety snack box. You've got chewy bars, nut bars, almonds. What do you think about it? I'm gonna do it. Yeah, just snacks on snacks. 51 snacks in here. $27. All right, we got our snacks. Bub, I do want to try these again. Okay. Somebody mentioned it in the vlog in my comments and said do collagen, and I remember I used to do it. Hair and nails and it worked really well. Yeah. So between this and sticking on my prenatals, I'm gonna try this for the hair loss situation. I, I I'm gonna grab this. This doesn't have a taste, it actually doesn't. I have a Fair Life 30. We go through this stuff like crazy. Price is a lot better here. We got the snack, we got the toothpaste. We need to look for mouthwash in this section. 14.49. Yeah. And that's a big thing. You have to go through those chomps things. They are. This is a Kodiak power cake. <laughs> we've never tried their beef lasagna, but we've tried Trader Joe's and it's so fire. It's so good. Let's do it. Yeah? Uh, beef lasagna. Ooh, that actually sounds better. Thank you. Yep. Delish. successful trip. Annie did so good until her nap time started closing in. So she just went down and we've got a mini Costco haul to go through. I love this. First up, we've got Fairlife protein. What are they? Shakes? Drinks? A protein shake. And usually we get the 42 grams of protein one, but this is a lot more cost effective getting them like this. And they only do these in 30 and the 26. 170, that's really that's good. Saving. It's like 175 per thing. So that's a lot of savings. And we end up getting a couple every time we go to the grocery store anyway. So that's really good. Got this double pack of Listerine. This is 1.5 each liters. So three total. And I just looked up on Amazon. And for the price that we got for this one, what is it? 14.49 on Amazon. <clears throat> it's not too far off for a whole liter less than what we got here. You guys saw the snacks that we picked out this time are the Kirkland variety pack and I'm actually so excited. We got these, how many, how many weeks back did we get these fig bars? Like a month ago or something? Yeah. And they filled so many of these jars for us and we just now got down to the last one. We have 51 snacks in here and this came to $26.99. I think I explained this in Costco, but when I talked about my postpartum hair loss on the other vlog, the comment suggested to continue taking my prenatal. I think this is technically a postnatal, but I hear that they're pretty much the same thing. I have not been on that, so I definitely should continue to take those. I have ritual. And then collagen is something that I completely forgot about. And I used to, when I wanted to get my hair in a healthier place, put this in smoothies. I tried it in coffee once. I could taste it more in coffee, but in smoothies, I can't taste it like at all. We got a big thing of this to have in the house, $31.99. And the big one you can get on Amazon is 19.3 ounces and it's more expensive. It's $34. So I get four ounces for less at Costco. I think the big one of the day was the toothpaste bud. Honestly, so much savings with that. So much savings. How long have we had this creamer in the house? At least two weeks, right? Yeah. At least two weeks. So I got this the other time I went to Costco and we're going on our third week of it and there's a pretty good amount left, I would say this much, but we might run out this week so we got another one. So three-ish weeks for one of these. And this is $7.99 and the creamer that I get is around three to four dollars at Market Basket. And we go through one of those creamers at Market Basket, I would say like every week to week and a half. Then I'm pumped. We love looking 
looking at their like pre-cooked dinners or like prepared stuff that you they give you of uh, instructions for it and everything but we weren't quite sold on what they had left but we've been loving the trader joe's lasagna that we tried during really early postpartum when we got a bunch of freezer meals and the lasagna was in that and we were like oh my god this is actually so good so we're gonna try the kirkland brand lasagna we'll let you guys know how it is enjoying some coffee, my bagel, my company, and Jack's company. <laughs> Annie Banani's newest trick is rolling. She took it by storm. It was like one day she despised tummy time and the next she was a rolling queen. So it quickly became known that we needed like a bigger surface area <laughs> for her to safely do tummy time. We're gonna need a bigger mat. We're gonna need a bigger mat. Something that is much softer too, so that we can hang out with her in our spaces because the only place now at that point that we could hang out was in the nursery because her rug was really cushy and out here there just wasn't a nice, safe, cushy place big enough for her to play. And I already knew the mat that I had my eye on because I saw it on social media and I had it in mind for when she started rolling. But that came a lot quicker than I expected. The brand is called called Pokey Mats and they are so stinking adorable. So when they were kind enough to gift us a mat, I was incredibly excited. Like I said, we broke it out last night and it was literally perfect. She was able to hang out in our space. We were able to hang out with her. We ate dinner all in the same space. They have a few different types of material mats depending on what you're going for, but I went with the vegan leather mat because it is incredibly easy to clean. And Annie is in a massive drooling phase. So just to be able to wipe up whatever mess happens on the mat, whether it's our mess from our dinner or her mess from drool. I never have to wonder if the mat is like clean or not, you know? The cover is also naturally waterproof and it has a side zipper closure for easy removal. The mat is also really thick and extremely soft so it can catch all of her tumbles and it's firm enough to support us standing on it as well. All of the mat's materials are certified free of dangerous toxins, which I was not finding in other mats. It's also so incredibly easy to fold up and put against the wall. It also has handles to move about the house depending on wherever we are, wherever we want to hang out with her. I've been wanting to make a video of going through my registry and now that I am a mom, kind of saying what items I would keep on there, what I wouldn't, but also what items I wish that I put on the registry and a tumble mat such as this would definitely be on there because we needed this mat before we needed a high chair or an activity center, for example. So thank you so much, Toki Mats. This is definitely a new staple product in our house for baby and I'll leave their website link down below in case your baby is all of a sudden a rolling queen like Annie is. But I promised them. What did you promise them? When I went. I can't. My body is not for their <laughs> consumption. I know but how bad. You when I went them. to the nail salon yesterday I remembered that we never told them about the last time that I ever went to the nail salon with you when I was super pregnant. Oh literally right before you were about to pop. Yeah. 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 The woman. Guys, that's not the catchy title to a rom com. It was almost a murder <laughs> mystery. Me, I almost ended up in jail at nine months pregnant. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's set the scene. Starting with the feet, like the chairs. Yeah. It's eight thirty a.m. Yeah, we went really early. Yeah. Just knock it out on a weekend. They, well, they were fitting us in. Yep. And for my birth nails. They're so sweet. Incredibly so nice. Mm -hmm. They squeezed us in. Mm -hmm. We show up early. Mac is nine months pregnant. I'm massive. Mac, yeah. yeah I'm a planet. Yeah, Mac mm -hmm. has 
the pull of gravity. And of course, these very sweet women are so excited. Yeah. And so Mac is the buzz of this like little oh. male studio. Thank God there weren't that many people because I hate being the center. Yeah. <laughs> but like the few customers that were in there were like looking and smiling and then all of the workers were talking and asking Mac questions. They were so sweet. They are so sweet. <laughs> there is this lady. So if you, there's like four chairs, like if Mac and I mm -hmm. are sitting like this. I'm where Jack was. Yeah, well, let's just say like the lady oh, okay. was on this side. Yeah, like, it's basically I was yeah. in between. I was in between them. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't think anything of it first. After we settled in and like the conversation kind of died up and the excitement and like they started to get like get to work and like busy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we could start to hear her conversation. Like with her tech. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. I think we can just say like basically like I didn't hear any of these comments that she was making but Jack told me after that it all started like when we were getting our toes done and she was just making like inappropriate comments or like comments you wouldn't really make out loud in a nail salon <laughs> and like clearly the things that she was talking about or asking her tech were also just kind of like over the line a little bit and yeah. the tech was just silent like she was just doing her job just like weird things and comments happening but <laughs> i didn't hear these jack heard all of them and so he was getting like an earful of just like oh my gosh this is horrible and when i tuned in my toes were done and they had asked me to go over to a nail place like a nail um station or whatever and you weren't getting your hands done so you went to a chair to just like hang out with me or like next to me oh, or i was literally like right that. next to you yeah i didn't hear these red flags so i was was blindsided by what came out of her mouth next. First thing I remember her asking is, how many months are you along? How, when are you due? And at that point we had days, like it was like the last weekend before giving birth. It was. It so was I said, I was like, oh, I'm giving birth next week because we already had an induction date. And she was like, oh wow. And I was like, yeah, these are my birth nails. Like I was just making conversation. I was getting like some really vibrant pink nails for baby girl. And she straight up asked me, which is fine, like this isn't, it's whatever. So then she straight up asked me, she was like, do you have a birth plan? And that's when I just knew. Cause like, what is she gonna say after that? You know, like even if I shared I my details, <laughs> even if she, if, even if I shared my details of my birth plan, what on earth was she gonna say after? Like, why is she asking? This is just massive red flag. So I said, I was like, yeah, I definitely do. Cause I'm giving birth next week. You know, like I, I have what I want, you know, et cetera. And she was like, well, do you have a doula? I was like, I was like, nope. Like we're, you know, me and my husband, we're gonna march on in there. I trust the medical staff. I wasn't like pushing her off, but I wasn't giving her a ton of details. I wasn't yeah. like, I'm gonna have an epidural. I'm gonna try meditation. I'm gonna try, like, I'm not sharing that with a random woman in a nail salon when I'm trying to like get my nails done and be really relaxed because I'm incredibly uncomfortable right. at like nine to 10 months pregnant. <laughs> and what did she say after? She told you that you should really consider having female support in the room. That's exactly what she said, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember it. And I was so angry in that moment for him. Because I'm like, you have literally, there was, it was so wrong. It was just like, you have no idea how supportive this man is in medical situations. And also, I was giving birth next week. You know what? Let me change my entire birth plan one week before giving birth and like get to know a doula over like one week because a random lady in a nail salon told me that I needed female support. Also, she then started pointing to literally a specific doula that was local it to was her, her Instagram. It was her cousin and she's social media and she has thousands of followers and you should listen to her because of that. That's literally oh my God. She was like, she has a lot of followers. Here, this is her Instagram. And she like was spelling out her Instagram. I was not looking up this Instagram. It was wild to think that I went my entire pregnancy without crazy things being said to me in public yes. about like, not even people saying like, oh, you're ready to pop. Like, no, like I had uh -huh. no comments. People were so nice. And then literally a week before birth, a random woman in a nail salon was critiquing the lack of detail that I gave her about my birth, birth plan and what I needed to do instead. Yeah, that's on you, bub. And also insulted my husband because he was clearly not enough support for the room. I will tell you, you guys saw the birth vlog. This man, I feel like I should rent you out for support <laughs> um, for birth. My body is not for consumption.
<laughs> he I, was incredible. I was more, thankfully. Mm -hmm. You were incredible. <laughs> the most I could have done was like feed you the ice chips. No, at a certain point, like, because I obviously checked out, but at a certain point, Jack had given so much support to me that one of our favorite nurses literally like took his shoulders and like sat him down and gave him a snack to eat yeah, like because did. Jack had like been standing for X number of hours. She was great. I love yeah, her. she was amazing, but he literally like hadn't eaten. The other thing is your back at the end of the hospital stay was so sore. Do you remember that? You were doing stretches and stuff because you wore your Vans. Oh yeah. And you were like, I should have worn my Crocs. You guys grab your Crocs. Yeah, that's or also, focus. that's something we hadn't mentioned before because you're like standing and supporting your partner in birth. That's a lot of standing to I have do. so many thoughts on what I would bring differently with me, all really? that stuff. Yeah. I'll include you in a hospital bag segment okay. for a, a different vlog because yeah. there are things that I didn't touch and then there are things that I wish that we had brought 100%. for sure for both you and me yeah like we have thoughts on that we so. should totally do that there are so many things that I feel like after that situation with the woman that I was like I should have said this I should have said that I think I just went quiet at a certain point you did I saw that woman's life flash before her eyes did you? I think I feared for her I totally like the comment like went over there it was like a bomb like watching it just drop and then i was like oh and like there's mac and like she is tense this is not the relaxing nail salon morning that she had anticipated if there was one thing that you could have said to that woman like one week before you give birth about her critiquing your birth plan doula or not just like somebody like telling you what you actually need on your birth plan what would you have said Leave that in the comments below. That is the question of the day. But anyways, my friends, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, make sure to do so down below. My Instagram is also linked down below in case you want to follow there for more real-time updates. I love you all so, so, so much. And we'll catch you in the next one, my friends. We'll see you later. Bye. Body is still not for sale. <laughs>